Thanks for watching Afternoon Live. Our next guest is a family and divorce attorney who's seen couples at their absolute lowest. He is here today to share questions that he believes will help improve your relationship and avoid divorce. We welcome Dennis Vetrano Jr. Thanks for joining us today. Good to be here. You've probably seen it all, so I appreciate your expertise on this topic. Every marriage is different, but we all go through tough times. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, they're all different, but there are things that you can do to try to help improve your marital relationship over time. And I like this idea of asking questions to your spouse to tap into what their needs might be. The first one that you suggest is, what can I do to help and, and what can you glean from your partner that way? Yeah, and I think, look, this is going to require you to really be in tune with your partner's feelings. But I think if you can try to sense when they're stressed out, when they're overworked, really be in tune with their mental health and care enough to ask, look, is there something I can do to help? It's going to make all the difference. Yeah, and question number two, do you feel like you're being heard? Because sometimes that communication just isn't always a two-way street. Yeah, and I find even just in general with human beings over time, what we do is we get so accustomed to formulating our responses during conversations rather than actually just listening to what the other person has to say. And I will tell you, it will once people realize or your spouse realizes that you're in tune with what they have to say and that you're really listening, they will, they will understand how much you appreciate what they have to say. Yeah, that's a great point. The next one you suggest is asking your partner what their perfect date might could be because maybe their answer has changed from when you got married 10 years ago. I think in marriages over time, people are constantly changing and we don't do enough to like re-engage, re-evaluate, reassess, reintroduce ourselves to our partners. And the best way to do that is ask them, what would be a perfect date night for you? And when you do that, you're gonna show them you care enough about their feelings and you're gonna gain some really valuable information about their interests and what they like to do. In your 20s, it might be going out and throwing back a few shots and going to the, to the dance club. But I will tell you, once you have two kids, 30s and 40s, it's probably going to be a quiet dinner overlooking some beautiful scenery. I once invited my husband to a laundry folding evening in our living room, and that was a magical time. We really enjoyed ourselves. I totally get that. Okay, number four, is there something I can do to help you have some me time? That goes a long way. That's so considerate. It does, and I think, you know what? It doesn't take all that much. All it means is take the kids upstairs and watch a movie with them. Give them some time. Take the kids, go out and go, go grocery shopping. Give them some time to do some yoga. Go for a walk. Take a bath. Read a chapter or two in a book. And I will tell you, you know, it's funny. I'll share a story that I had with, in my own marriage. You know, my wife said to me maybe about, you know, two, three, four months ago, she said, you know what? She says, I was talking with a divorce couple the other day, and they said to me, you know, every other weekend, couple of times a month, I get a weekend of me time. And she's like, it's funny because when you're married, you never really get that time. And I thought to myself, you know, why do we wait until we're split, until we're divorced to actually work hard to take into account our partner's feelings and try to give them some me time that they really need? Yeah, it's so important, especially as you mentioned with young kids running around, it can be really chaotic at times. So just some calm, peaceful moments alone can go a long way. I like this one to you ask, what goals would your partner like to accomplish over the next several years? That might answer might surprise you. Yeah, and I think, you know what, it's surprising how many people, how many couples have been married for decades, and still, if you ask them some questions about their partner, they couldn't really answer those questions correctly. So what you do here is, if you were in the beginning stages of a relationship or you were dating for a few months, what would you be asking that other person? You would be asking them things like, what makes them happy? What do they enjoy? What goals do they have? So this gives us an opportunity to continually re-engage with our partner over time so that you never end up in that circumstance where after several years you just don't know who each other is. Yeah, that's really wonderful. Okay, number six, do you feel appreciated? And you have to be prepared for the answer, right? You might not like their response. You do, and I, and I caution people. You know, if you ask your partner this question, be prepared they may tell you something that you don't really want to hear. I think as human beings, it's very difficult for us to look in the mirror and really honestly self-evaluate. And this is an opportunity for you to do that. But I will tell you, when they give you the answer, don't get defensive, don't deflect. Remember, it's not about what you believe you're doing to make them feel appreciated. It's about their perception, and that's very important. So understand, listen to them. You'll gain some very valuable information. And I will tell you, 
That's one of the most important things you can receive from your partner is to feel valued and feel appreciated. I love all of that so much, but okay, final question. What if you're the partner who feels like, I wish my spouse would ask me these questions and be more in tune with my needs. Is there a way you can flip it to make your voice heard more? It is, and here's the thing. You, you know, did you ever hear the saying that you can't change other people, you can only change yourself? Well, I'm a strong propon proponent of that. I will tell you, if you start engaging with your spouse in this way, and even overall as a human being, if you start taking using those sort of tactics, what you'll find is you're received very differently by other people. They'll engage with you more. They'll appreciate you more. You'll have more connection. And then I think when you do that on your end, ultimately you will get that back in spades. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. Do you find certain pitfalls with couples or folks who wind up in your office and they think they want to split up, but you kind of see things where, wait a minute, maybe if we change our perspective a bit, maybe we could, we could resolve this and kind of salvage the situation? Yeah, I think what happens with relationships over time, to be honest, in my experience, is they die in little pieces mm -hmm. over time. It's little, we, we lose little pieces of the relationship over time. Little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. And then we find 20 years later, we don't really know each other anymore. So these are the tools that you use so that you don't, you, you don't, you don't overlook those little things. The listening, the engagement, the, the, the reintroducing yourself to each other, the spending time together, the we time, the me time, over time, that's a cumulative effect. So occasionally you're gonna get those relationships that are gonna come into my office and they are salvageable. And what I usually suggest in those circumstances is, if you know that relationship is worth working on, take the time to do it. And don't hesitate to employ a professional to assist. Yeah, because it's hard work, it's not easy, but if you put some time in, you just never know. And, and people do, we grow and change, and that's okay, you might not be the same person that stood across from your partner and said those vows a couple of decades ago, but you can still reconnect. Right, and I think the thing is, it's you have to understand you will change, and your relationship over time will evolve. You're not gonna connect with each other in the same way at 25 as you did at 18, and not the same way at 35 as you will at 45 or at 55. It will be different, but it, you can grow in parallel and not grow in different directions. You just have to make the effort to do it. Making the effort, that can be the hardest part sometimes. I just right. appreciate your perspective so much. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. There is hope to be had. Absolutely, absolutely. Relationships, you can, if you work on them and they're worth keeping, you can sustain them. Just put the time and the work in. I love that message. Thank you again so much. And we'll have more information on our website at katu.com. We'll be right back with more Afternoon Live right after this.